In this demo, I want to go ahead and shift gears over to uh, server-side JavaScript, and that would be Node.js. And to start with, I just want to show you the environment that we're going to be working in. So initially, in order to get started with Node.js, we're going to have to go to nodejs.org, and then there's going to be a download for Node.js. Uh, I'm using the long-term support version of it, the 10.15.3. Um, and the way I know that is if I come out to a terminal window, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up my terminal. So I'm on my terminal right now. I can just go ahead and type in the command node-v, and you'll see that I'm using this 10.15.3 version, this long-term support version. Um, when I download Node, it also comes with NPM, which is Node Package Manager. So I also have the npm install, so if I do npm-v, you'll notice that I have uh, the node package manager installed as well. Okay, and I can see all that from my terminal window. So uh, in order to get started, we're going to have to have this Node.js download, and it's available for Windows, it's available for OS X, it's available for Linux, so it's available for whichever operating system you want to be working on. but. I've already downloaded that and installed it, and um, if you're downloading it and installing it for the first time, I'm really just using the default values um, for um, the installation. Okay, so uh, once I have that, what it does is it allows me to run Node, or straight JavaScript, um, on my machine using the, the V8 engine. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and the way I'm going to get started is I'm just going to deal with some JavaScript. So um, I want to call this file app.js, and I'm going to save it on my desktop in a new folder called node-js. So I'm creating the new folder, and then my file name is going to be app.js, and this is an arbitrary file name but it usually um, index.js or app.js would indicate the starting point of your application. So node.js is not, or node.js is not like Java where you would have your public static void main that takes a string array of arguments as your starting point. Um, anywhere can be a starting point for your JavaScript. So by convention, we're gonna call this app.js. And uh, what you'll see is I can use my JavaScript conventions. So I can say, you know, here's my name. And then I can log that information. Okay, so I have this JavaScript application where I declare a variable and I log that variable. Um, and then ideally, I want to be able to run this. So you can see it's on my desktop in a folder called Node.js and then this file app.js. So I'm going to switch over to my terminal window. I'm going to change my working directory into that desktop node.js directory. So my working directory is there. And what I want to do in order to run this application is I'm going to use the command node to indicate that I want to run a node application, and then app.js. And you'll notice that it prints out Brian. If we change the name to Cubs Stink, and run it again, you'll see that I now get the Cub Stink output. So that's kind of the, the mechanism that we'll use to run our application. Okay, so um, with Node.js, if you've investigated it at all, um, what ends up happening a lot of times is you'll see syntax that doesn't necessarily make sense. And by that, what I mean is, a lot of times you'll see an application that looks like the following. So I'll have this HTTP where I require HTTP, and then I'll take that HTTP and create a server. Um, it takes a function definition that's gonna take a request and a response. And then we might um, send a response, so we might write, um, hello world from node.js response.end and then dot listen on port 3000 
And then we might do a console.log listening on port 3000. Okay, and then if we head back over to our terminal and we run that application, okay, so it says we're listening on port 3000. And if we go over to our browser and go to localhost colon 3000, Okay, so you'll notice that we get this hello world from Node.js. That's our application, so we're listening on port 3000. Uh, what we really did here is we created a web server and we can serve up web pages on port 3000. And this is usually kind of the first introduction people see into Node.js. And if you're like me, when I first saw this, uh, it didn't make a ton of sense. It's like, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand where this require comes from. Like, how is that factoring in? Where do I get information about this? Like, how can I go further with Node.js? Uh, so what I want to do today is I want to back up a step and I want to take you back to the beginning about where does this require actually come from? In, in terms of our application. So this is great. It's kind of a cool demo that we can create a web server and serve up you know, this Hello World application. Um, and it's, you know, if you look on the internet for Node.js, this is probably the most common example, right? Because everyone wants to see Hello World. Um, but it doesn't give me the background that I need to actually build Node.js applications. So that, that's what we want to do today, is like, where does this require come from? How does it fit into the whole Node framework? Okay, so in order to do that, what I want to do is I want to create another file. So I'm going to create a new file called logger.js. And as you can guess by the name, what I'm going to do is I want to create like a logging mechanism. Okay, so uh, in order to create that logging mechanism, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a function definition to log a message. So I'll have a, ver a function called log it's going to be equal to some function definition that takes a message as a parameter and then logs it. So super simple. Okay, so here's our function definition. We take a message uh, and then we log it. And um, I think we all know what this function does. It's using modern JavaScript script syntax. However, before we actually work with that, what I want to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit here and I'm going to create an error and I'm going to create the error on the very first line of this file. Okay, And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to have a constant called um, dummy equal to semicolon. Okay, And that'll generate a JavaScript error. So if I come back over to my terminal window, uh, this logger file is still in the same directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do node logger.js and we get the error that we expected the syntax error unexpected token semicolon so our semicolons out of place um, but if we look a little bit further up you can see that um, we have a message about a function that takes this exports and require and module and underscore underscore file name and underscore underscore dir name um, and if you um, deal with JavaScript enough, what you'll realize is that this is a self-executing function and it's going to wrap every one of our JavaScript files inside of that node framework. It's called the, uh, the node module function and what it is is that every module that I have is essentially wrapped with this function definition and it's a self-executing function so that it can all be brought into this node ecosystem. Okay, so uh, within this file, it's going to be a node module, and every node module has access to these variables that are getting passed in. Okay, and the way we know that, so if we get rid of this, because it, it doesn't need to be there, it's implicitly put in by node, um, we can do stuff like console.log underscore underscore file name. Okay, so we want to output the file name. Uh, if we come back over, now we don't have a syntax error. And you can notice that it gives me the file name. We could also use it for the directory name. Okay, so same exact concept, except now it's just going to take me to the directory. 
Okay, so every node file has that information. And the reason that's important is because I have this function definition that I want to expose to the world, right? I wrote this reusable function. I want it to be my logger for my entire application. Um, so what I can do is I can then use that module object and say that I want to export the log function. So I actually want to export this log function. Okay, so that's what's going to come out of this file is this log function. And that's what this exports is really saying. So uh, when someone else uses this file, this logger.js file, what they're really going to get is this log function. Okay, so that's how this, this file is recognized. Now if I come back over to my application, I'm going to get rid of this stuff that we had, this kind of dummy stuff that we had to create a web server. And instead, what I want to do is I'm going to create a variable or a constant log that's going to be equal to the require logger.js. And usually, just by convention, the syntax will be dot slash if it's in the same directory. Okay, And if we really think about what's happening here, this log is pointing at this function definition. So that we can then use the log function to pass in a message, hello world. So we're basically importing this file. And when we import the file, um, we import the stuff that that file indicated should be exported. Okay, so it's kind of a matching pair. So we're using that function now to output the word hello world. So if we clear this and we just use node app.js, uh, I have an error. Oh, I, the way I exported it is wrong. So I'm exporting the log function. Okay, so just change the export a little bit. And then you'll notice that I'm getting my hello world message. Now it's running that function. Okay, and to really prove to you that it's running that function, uh, we might use something like, here is your message. Okay, so now we've modified it, we can run it again, we can say here's your message, and you'll see hello world gets output. Um, so we're, we're importing this function definition over into our app.js file, and then we're using it. And you may have recognized that it's very similar syntax to our first example when we created a web server. So initially when we created a web server, we declared a constant called HTTP, and we we're requiring the HTTP library, um, so to speak. Now um, we're requiring our logger library so that we can use it. And our library log, our library for our logger is just one function definition, which is, allows us to log things. Okay. Um, so I, I messed up the syntax when I initially exported this. And the reason why is because um, exporting just a single function is, a, is you know, kind of a unique thing. Usually what will end up happening is this logger um, might end up being a whole class. So what I want to do is I want to expand on this. And I want to use modern ES6 syntax to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class definition called logger. And my logger is going to have a, a, a function called log that takes a message. And all we're going to do here is we're going to use that same concept of logging the message. Okay, so now we have a class definition that's going to handle our log so that we can kind of build this out. Maybe we want to um, save all of our log messages to a database. Maybe we want to provide notifications when things are logged. Um, who knows what we want to do with this class. Um, but we might want it to be more than just this function definition. And now um, what's going to end up changing is we're no longer going to export um, just the function definition. We want to export this entire class. Okay, so we're exporting the entire class. 
And then when we come over here, we're no longer creating a constant for a function definition. When we require logger, what we're really exporting is a class definition. So what we're going to end up with is we're going to have a class definition as our constant. And you'll notice that I changed the case. And the reason for that is by convention, um, my naming convention is, is if I'm going to be bringing in a class definition, the class definition should be uppercase. And that's exactly what we're doing. So now I have this class called logger. I want to create an instance of a logger. So I'm going to have a variable called logger. It's equal to a new instance of that class definition. And then using the same concept, we can use our class definition to log our message. Okay. One other change that I want to make is in Node.js, um, the default file extension is going to be this .js file extension. So I can omit the file extension there, and it's automatically going to pick up on that file. Okay, so now I have my app.js all set. Um, I'm going to run it again, and you'll notice that I'm still getting hello world. And we're using our class definition. We're calling this instance method on our class definition because that's what got exported. Okay, so when you see this require, um, the require is really just bringing in code from another file. And I really need to look into that other file to see, am I bringing in a class definition? Am I bringing in a function? Like, what am I actually bringing in in that other file? And that's really going to be defined by, on, by what that file exports to the outside world. Like, what am I making visible uh, for when someone else requires that file? Okay, so, and you'd have no idea other than to either look at the file or look at documentation. Um, to figure that out. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is kind of show you how powerful this can be. And the way I want to do that is this logger class right now. Right now, all it does is it logs messages. Um, what I want to do is I want to provide notification anytime this logger logs a message. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a built in class um, called um, event emitter, okay? And the event emitter, the, it, it's kind of a complicated example, but essentially what I want to do is I want to log a message, and then anyone that's subscribed to that, I'm going to trigger an event here. I'm going to emit an event so that anyone that's listening for those events could then respond to it. I say it's kind of a complicated example, but I also think it's worthwhile here because there's so many things in Node.js that are built off of this em event emitter. Like specifically, um, our web server is an event emitter. So when we create a web server and we start to deal with web examples, it's an event emitter and we get notified when there's connections, we get notified when there's new requests, um, and they trigger events. So this kind of sets up that model really nicely. Okay, so in order for our logger to create an event, our logger has to require the events library. So I'm going to have an event emitter. And it's going to be equal to um, this events library. And um, this events library, you're probably thinking, like, where the heck did that come from? Um, if we go to Node.js under docs, and then there's the API for the version of Node.js that we're using, which is this long-term support version, and we're talking about events, and we're talking about an event emitter, this class. So if I scroll down, there's on events, so I can specify an event name, um, there's this emit, which is an event name and some arguments. Um, but then also, like you'll see this example where it shows how to actually bring in um, this library so that you can actually use it. Okay, so uh, we have declared our event emitter, not eventer emitter. Uh, we've declared our event emitter, which is really a class definition. And then 
uh, what we want to do is we want to say that our logger class is an instance of an event emitter. So we're using inheritance here. So the way we're going to uh, use inheritance is we're going to say that it extends this event emitter. So we're extending that class. So now our logger class is an event emitter. And because we've done that, now every time a message is created, we can now emit an event. And we can, uh, if we look at the uh, emit method, so here's the um, emit method, you'll notice it takes an event name. We can name it whatever we want because we're generating an event essentially. And then it'll also take arguments and you'll notice it's in square brackets indicating that that's um, an optional argument. So we could just say, you know, hey, we're triggering this message log event. But it might be nice to actually have some arguments to this event. And the way the arguments work is I'm going to pass an object with some data. So I, I'm, I'm going to emit an event saying, hey, a message was logged. And then I want to give information to my end users about what that message was. So I'm going to send the message as an event argument. OK, so that's what this class definition is doing. And we're still exporting the class just like we were. So now logger is an event emitter. We're ex exporting it. Uh, over in here in the app.js file, we've included the logger. And um, we are logging a message. So that message is going to get logged to the console. That's what the logger does on the log message. But then when that we do call that event, when we do call that method, uh, what that method is going to do is it's going to trigger an event. An event is going to occur, this message log event. Um, so what we can do is we can then take this logger and we can say on, we can set up an event handler because the logger is an event emitter and it can handle events. So we can say on message logged, we should have a function definition here ready to capture that event. Okay, so when this event occurs, what ends up happening, and this goes back to when we emitted the event, we passed data. So we said, you know, here's the arguments for this event. Uh, we're going to get arguments back when the event occurs. So everyone that's listening for this message logged event is going to get data back. It's going to get arguments back. Um, event args. And we can do something with them. So we're setting up an event handler here. So on message logged, we're going to get past some event arguments. In our case, it's going to be the message data. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to log the event args. OK. So uh, we log our message. When we do, we're calling out to our class. And we call that instance method log. OK, so we're over here. We log the message that's going to go to the console. Uh, that essentially fires off an event, a message log event, where we send the message data on. And then back in our app, we have an event handler for when that event occurs so that we should be able to log the event arguments, which will be the message again. And if we want, we can do something like, you know, here's, um, and we can put this all into one method, but uh, I'm just going to say, you know, message logged event triggered and then I'll put some spacing there okay so just some logging information so that we can see when the event occurs and then if we go back over to our terminal window and clear this uh, we should be able to run node that app.js and you'll notice we get the message so the log was still working but we did not get our event handler we did not get any information about hey on message logged all of this stuff happened and it could be that we messed up our code right so maybe we don't have something synchronized correctly or um, you know, we just messed up on our code. But if we're reading this file sequentially, what ends up happening is we require the logger, we create a new instance of the class, we log the message, and when we log the message, it'll trigger an event handler. 
But at this point, we don't have any way to handle the event. That doesn't come until later. That comes on line 7. Uh, what we really need to do in order for this demo to work is we need to move all of that code that we had down below, that event handler, the message log event handler. Um, that, me that method, that event handler, has to come before we actually would trigger the event in order for us to see any results. Okay, so now I'm going to run this again, and now you'll notice that we get our message, and then we get our event handler saying, hey, the event was triggered. We get our data, our event arguments, which was a, a JSON object that had our message, and then we get our closing brackets. Okay, so our logger is an event emitter. Okay. And again, an event emitter is, is kind of a difficult thing to, to deal with, um, but what ends up happening is if we go back over to our Node API and we go to the HTTP library, so we were at the event library and now we're going to the HTTP library, um, there's a method which is create server. So we have this server. And if we look in here, and you'd have to look through the documentation, but you'll see that this server is an event emitter. It's, it's set up exactly the same way. So on client errors, what should happen? So an event is occurring. And that's because our HTTP server that we're building is an instance of an event emitter. Okay, and somewhere in here, I think it says that, if you look at the documentation close enough, um, I don't know where I'd find it, to be honest with you. Um, but you can see the different events that we'd deal with. And that's why it's important that we deal with this event emitter. So really, um, all of this stuff that we went through in this demo is not necessarily important, but it's more an introduction into how does the Node.js architecture work? Like, so if I'm going to build a class definition, like, how do I bring it over? What is this require all about? Um, how do I bring in libraries? So right now we're building our own library for the logger, and then our logger is bringing in an existing library from the Node.js API. Okay, and when we do bring it in, um, we got to look at the API documentation to say, you know, under docs, there's the 10.15.3 API so that we can get details about, like, what are we actually doing with these pre-built libraries that are available to us? Okay, and then as we go forward, um, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at um, the Node HTTP server, so we're going to build a basic web server. And then we're also going to look at the file system API. And the reason we're going to look at the file system API is because it's going to be helpful when we actually build our web server. Okay, so um, those are kind of the next steps.